Hello everybody and welcome to another episode oh, of Mix <laughs> Welcome to Mix Mowers everyone. Um today we've got a, a mower just come in. Ready? Yes mate. What would you fly? Uh, we've done all of them. We've got to do one more today What's that? Uh, of the uh, the other ones, yeah. But today he's had a text come in from a gentleman. He's got a lawnmower. And I think his name is Andrew. Addy. He lives very, very local. And he said his lawnmower's playing up. He's got a Mountfield SP470. Um, but he says it struggles when cutting long grass, which I think they all sort of do anyway. Um, people that expect lawnmowers to do the, the unthinkable and cut really long grass. But, but I said, well, bring it in for service and um, are you off out, are you? Okay. Um, bring it in for service and I will, uh, I'll look at it for you. So I've had a quick look at it, it just on the driveway and you can't turn it off. Um, and it sounds like it's really struggling. So number one, I need to sort out the, um, the safety micro switch on it because it's not working. Um, get that done. And then we can then move on to a service and what have you. Um, I said I'll have it done today. He's like fantastic. He needs to cut his lawn. So um, he went down to his local lawnmower shop and they quoted him a extortionate amount of money and um, also a three week wait period. So um, he found me on Facebook and um, yeah, I said it'll be done today. No problem. As long as there's nothing wrong with the engine, it'll be done um, and you'll have it back. So it'd be cool. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty yeah. and let's have a look at this Mountfield SP470. Right, and here it is, um, reliable Briggs and Strat SP470 on a, uh, what year is that? Can't even find the year. I'd say about 2005, looking at the uh, state of the, uh, the deck and what have you. Um, let's get, someone's been in here, obviously you can see. But we'll have a little look at it, see what we can do. I'll fire it up now, it all runs, but uh, it does struggle. And also, I'm not going to pull the engine brake in. Why? Because it doesn't work. So you can pull it. Give it a cut of primes. So that's it running with the engine brake out. When I pull the brake in, you listen to the revs. So that's the first we need to address. That's why it's um, struggling to cut grass is because he's not running it with the engine brake in. Uh, the mark switch isn't working. So as soon as you pull the red lever in, um, the revs go up. So um, it should cut fine after that. Let's get it on the bench and let's have a look to see what's going on with it. So first things first, let's get into this, um, this cover. One there, one there. Yeah, someone's been in here already so I dare say it was him he's had it about five years this mower so it'd be interesting to see what's up with it but it's going to be a mark a mark switch problem just going to be checking because that should be stopping it stopping the signal so I'm guessing it's going to be a, a cable problem or a switch problem because the actual switch is working but it's a bit of grease around it so first thing i'm going to do let me just show you right so the first thing we're looking at is this micro switch and there's a big bit of grease right on the end of that so the first thing i want to do is just clean that off because number one we shouldn't be able to start this lawnmower up with a dead man's handle in so first thing we're going to do is just literally going to clean this area just so it makes a good contact. And that isn't actually, it's only just touching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the dead man's handle back and push this down just a touch. 
and now you should see that move. It's not quite bridging the gap. Let's get a bit more of a bend to it. There you go. Now you can see it actually moving as it as it goes up. I'll give it a bit more. Or a good contact. There you go. Now it's actually connecting and doing its job. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, just try and fire it up on the bench to see if that makes any difference at all to the um, to the mower. Right. So technically, I'll show you what, the reason why it's struggling in a minute, but I want this now to be working properly. So you should be able to pull this. Oh, it shouldn't start anyway. Let me try and give it a pull. Nothing. You can pull dead man's handle in. Pumps. And now that mark which is now working. Literally just a bit of grease. So the revs will go up now automatically. I'll show you the reason why that was that was struggling. So what I'm now gonna do is remove the pull cord cover. Now for those of you that are experienced with this Briggs and Stratch, you'll know exactly where I'm, where I'm gonna go to next. But for those of you that are not familiar, this may be a bit of information for you. Let me grab a magnet tray. I don't lose none of my bits. Take the 3 8 bolts out and remove the uh, pull cord assembly. Okay, now around this side of the lawnmower, I'll just bring you around. Okay, I hope this new pole on my tripod is giving me some real good close ups now. So, this is your micro switch, as you can see. And when you pull the lever in to activate it, not only does it open the switch to give you a, um, a circuit for a spark but it also releases this little tiny pad here now that pad there is your engine brake with what was happening because this was dirty um, it wasn't telling the spark plug that the switch was closed and because it wasn't doing that the brake was on and you can see there's been some scoring on this flywheel so with the engine with the dead man's handle um, released this was still making a suck because it was dirty but the brake was still on and by pulling it now back out, that engine brake is now clear of the flywheel and it can now run at its desired desired speed. But isn't that your problem with the engine? It's just literally the micro switch was the issue. I'm going to get a file on here, clean this up even more to make sure it's working, get a good clean up, some WD-40, and then uh, that, the actual problem to a lawnmower is actually solved. However, he wants it serviced as well. So I'll do that now and I'll come back. And all I'm doing is just squirt some WD-40 and we're having a clean literally all we're going to be doing now the problem the reason why this is happening is because on these engines they don't come with a um, a cover on the back of these because they um, have a, a top head cover on there and it's one of the one of his shortcomings to the bricks they have a little tiny black cover that goes on here you wouldn't have that problem just getting all the grass in there so good good sort of clean out and that's now working exactly how it should do you can see this part here is raising as the uh, handle is released so that's now working exactly as it should do so that's now problem fixed next place we're going to go is be the air filter so that looks like, judging by the state of this uh, machine, it's all going to be dirty. Yeah, oily. He's tipped it up because he doesn't want to know why, why it's not working right. So, there needs a new air filter in there. And we give us all a good blow off around this area. I'll put some tissue in here first. All the springs are fine, working as it should do. So, let me get a bit of tissue. And all I want to do. Let's put a bit of clean tissue straight in that hole there. Yes, mate. What's that? Yeah, it's a plaster, isn't it? Is it Ellie's plaster from the other day? I know. I'm out. All right. So I'm just putting some some rags down inside. I'm gonna get my spray. 
and we have a good clean up all the way around. This is just lift some of the grime up. I get my air compressor fired up and have a good air compress off to clean all the areas. I'll even get my toothbrush in there as well. Or a paintbrush, anything to do. Just to start to agitate the areas. Just so we can start to lift up some of this dirt and grime. This will affect the springs as well. So we have grime on there. See, look, that's all got to come off. That's built in grime. The heat shields come for a burton as well. So let me fire my compressor up and I'll give it a good blast off. Okay, I just wanted to remove the um, the fuel tank assembly as well because uh, there's a lot of dirt behind this um, heat shield in the fins and it does help to remove them um, remove all the dirt because the engine will cool down quicker it won't get as hot so that's all now done I'll give us a bit of a clean off and a blow off as well and I'll refit the tank back on okay tanks are now cleaned off just gonna take a quick sample of the uh, the petrol from right down the bottom and we're getting all sorts of bits and pieces in there so I'm going to remove all that petrol out of there. However, the carburetor is running, so I shan't be doing a uh, a clean. My word! Look at the stuff that's come out of there. Can you see that? It could just be somebody looking to buy solar lawnmowers on and um, looking to to get this one run, running to himself a few quid, which is fine. But um, because he wants it serviced, he won't make a lot of money out of it. But that tank was absolutely filthy. So now it's had a good a tank flush. A few more bits now to get out. So I'm just going to put a uh, some kitchen roll inside this tank and uh, get the rest out. Purposely using um, kitchen roll because it is super absorbent and it will pick up all the bits that I want out. I'm not going to upset the carburetor by taking the, uh, lifting the carburetor off because that will incur the gentleman a further cost. However, if it starts to play up once I've started working on it, then uh, it'll have to come off. So now to start to lift this out and hopefully it'll come out in one go. And all the little tiny bits and pieces that go with it. Absolutely full of it. And now that carburetor, if I'm going to go again, it's still not quite there. Put a bit more fuel in. A bit more kitchen roll. So we're going to refit the tank on. And you want your little tiny rubber o ring that was on the intake, and the little tiny cap that goes with it. Dirt on there. Just clean that off. And it goes on that way. And it clips on. Onto the linkage. I can see it. in there, push it all on, 13 mil goes in, 3 eighths goes in, Now we're in a much cleaner environment 
can't find me fuel cap. It's, it's about somewhere. It won't have gone far. Um, I'll find it in two ticks. And what we're now going to do is we're going to now take the oil out of this machine because it's as black as you're at. And uh, we're doing all change. So this engine has been run for a little while, not for very long, but we do the oil change anyway. It's easy to, to take the oil out when the engine's been running. Nothing coming up. There it goes. Right, I'll extract the soil, and then we tip the lawnmower up on its side to inspect the blade. Okay, all the oil is now out of this machine. New air filter, pardon me, new air filter going in. That's all been cleaned off. And just gonna get a little bit of uh, WD-40 spray. Coat the bottom. So that's all done. All the springs are fine, as I say. I might be able to tweak this engine a bit later on once I know what's going on with it a bit better. Air filter cover back on. I'm going to want to tip this lawnmower up on its side. Now there's no wall in it. And uh, just see what's going on with the blade. <clears throat> I'm expecting to see a battered blade. <clears throat> Not expecting to see a, a well-maintained one, that's for certain. Let's have it up. There's no wall in this machine, as I say, so it can go up quite high. And oh, the blade is not surprisingly too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Let me show you. Okay, here's underneath. Boss is on correctly. It's not actually too bad under here. Someone's actually looked after this a little, a little bit. I have not a great deal. The blade is not too shabby, but it does want an edge put on it. Um, the belt. I know it's on the test for drive earlier. Just want to see if I can get to this um, this cover. There's normally two screws down here which are hidden, which are absolute pickles to get at. But I want to take the blade blade cover off as well, so I can just clean out behind this drive system as well if it'll let me. If I can find the screws. Let's start with removing this blade. Right, got my air compressor all fired up because uh, I'm not gonna say again, mate. Not noisy, mate. That won't be too bad. Won't be too bad, buddy. I'm gonna fire my old gun up. I think it'll make short work of these old, these old boxes, these old belts, belts, blades. Let's have a look. It's not wickedly bad. It just wants a new edge put on it. That, that is actually worse, that side. But I'll grind a new edge onto that anyway. Let's now have a quick look to see if I can, in fact, remove this cover. I dare say, I see grass in behind here. I want to get all this out. So it'd be a half inch on there. A half inch, 13 mil, somewhere in that line. Let's, uh, that's all, sorry, that's a 14 on there. All right, no good, no one. Let's try half inch. Okay, so what I do with these now, they don't muck about. I reach straight for a grinder. <coughs> yeah, a bit of noise, Riley. And I'm gonna put a, a flat headed groove into this so I can get a decent flathead drive on the back of it. Just like that. And then that should give me enough room if I can find a decent flat edge screwdriver. There's a big one. To get that on there now, and you should better then twist them out just like so. That'd be hot to go careful. 
and that in my opinion is the quickest and easiest way of doing it. And we'll do the same here, but this latch looks broken, this one, in fact it is, it's coming straight off. So nothing to do with that one. That all now lift out, and look at all that stuff in there. Absolutely full of it, nice little bird's nest, all the drives full up, so I'll get it all cleaned off and I'll come back. Okay, so that's now the uh, blade cover now successfully cleaned as it should be. That can now go back on. I've got one screw to put in here because the other one is broken on the on a on the guard. But as I say, by putting a little flat headed wedge in that, you can now successfully put that straight back in. And if it comes back next year, which I'm not expecting it to. You can just get straight in there with that flat headed driver <clears throat> and do it straight up and that just saves so much time now what i might do i might also just put a screw in this plastic just here going in that way just to hold this side up because it's a bit floppy that's what I sometimes do when these are broken just give them a bit more life just wind a screw in there self-tapping screw in there about so far and it just holds that one up Right, all I'm now going to do, literally, like I say, is I'm just going to push this cover up as far as it'll go. It'll be about there. I'm just going to get this screw. I'm just going to wind it into the side of this plastic. There's plenty of clearance behind. So it won't affect nothing. And just put it in about there. And now that won't drop any further down than what it should do. And that won't come out. Right, that's that. Let me now put this uh, half inch back on and then I sharpen the blade up. Right, that blade took some serious grinding actually, but I've managed to get a decent edge on it now, front and back, and it's been balanced as well. So, <clears throat> it was actually more battered than what I thought, it was just out of shape actually, is a better word. Let's now put that blade back on. And it's, that uh, blade is nowhere near that screw Anyway, shape or form, fats it's about a good inch away. <clears throat> Just a good little, good little quick fix, rather than keep purchasing new stuff. Try and prolong my life if you can. Oh, I can't get me a gun on. That's it. All right, let's whack this blade on. Oh, that tip my lawnmower over. Well, that's on. Yeah, that's nowhere near that that, uh, that screw. It's a good, good inch away, which is where you want it. And the blade is not bent any way, shape or form. Good, we can now get on, um, change the spark plug and get that gapped. Right, onto a spark plug, B2LM. That's what I use. Get my feeler gauges and I want about 30 foul, I'll be fine. 35, 33, 30. They are near enough gaps, right? Just a little bit. Hair's breath too big, that one. Got some new ones in today. Uh, a chance to gap them all up. Normally gap them all up, because normally bridges I'll work on. Perfect. That's that gapped. And we'll have the old spark plug out. And it's got a B2 LM on it in here, I think. That's oh, a Champion. Uh, Champion RJ19 LM, and it's uh, yeah, well worn. We'll have that out. New one in. It wasn't in very tight, to be fair. It doesn't be glossy tight, but it needs to make a good seal so it gets good compression. That there. Right, so we've done spark plug, air filter, blade sharpened, balanced, drive checked, and uh, cleaned out underneath. Blaze will sharpen, got to be all chuckled with the oil. Uh, dead man's switch has been done. I can test the drive when I get the lawnmower back in the garden running and working. So, yeah, we'll go for the oil next. And just going to be using um, some, what am I using? SEA 30. Uh, oil, which I pick up off of Amazon for about fifteen pound for five liters. Stick that in there. 
oil. Yeah, SAE 30 is what I use. And just literally gonna to top that up now to a desired level. It generally is about about two funnels. That's how I how I judge it. Once it's got about two funnels in, I know that's roughly the right amount. And then I'll uh, put a dipstick back in and uh, let that settle down. And then uh, we'll check it. I also do a quick visual inspection of inside the pull cord. Right at the end, where that's normally where it snaps. And the pull cord is actually fine. And I'm just going to put that back into its place. Don't want to pinch HT lead if I can help it. Push that all the way home. And whilst I'm refitting this back on, that gives the oil chance uh, just to settle down where it needs to be. So I'll just refit these um, three, three eight bolts back onto the head. And just start them off to begin with just to line everything up before you put them all the way home. Because they never line up exactly as you want them. So just start them off. Once they're in, you can wind them all the way home. Good. One good clean off up here. Just remove any further dust. Let's see how old this engine is, shall we? I can see. Uh, 2003. I said five, didn't I, originally? So that wasn't far out. <coughs> Right, that's that done. I'll go to put the cover back on now and then we'll check the oil one last time. Okay, so that's the um, cover put back on and literally just tidy up the, the circle bit there. It just annoys me. So let's uh, grab an old rag. But all that been sat for about two or three minutes. God. Let's see whereabouts we are. And we are three quarters, so just need to put a bit more in and we'll be good to go. All right, let's just had about another half a funnel. And we'll see how that's doing now. And there it is there, it's just a hair's breath over, but I dare say by the time that um, has a bit of a run, um, that would be exactly where it needs to be. Yeah, just a hair's breath over. But uh, Tom, I run it, that'll be fine. I should check it once I've run it as well. Right, just an all over tidy. Um, and then we take it outside and uh, give it a run. stuff in there. Just want to tweak the revs ever so slightly. OK, 
Okay, so that little lawnmower is now up and running exactly how it should be. Um, it's had the complete full service to include spark plug air fit or all changed, blade shaft and balance, blade cover removed, um, and that little screw put in just to hold it. The micro switch done, uh, which is the most important one. It's been run up, tank flush, um, and also just tweak the spring ever so slightly, but I don't like giving these little Briggs's too much because they're self-governed anyway, um, and they should run at a, a, a particular speed, but um, he did mention it was a little bit sluggish, and it, and it was, so I have just tweaked it ever so slightly. Um, I've tested it around the garden, not that my grass is very long at all, but uh, hopefully um, it'll do, and it all runs as it is. So just text him, he's super happy um, that we've managed to get it in and done in a couple of hours. Um, rather than having to wait the standard three weeks in a normal lawnmower shop, so it's super happy. So we're now off with Brandon to go down to Specsavers. He's got to go and get some glasses, his eyes tested, new glasses. We're we going to do that. Daddy, yeah. Are we'll take the camera, shall we? Yeah, we'll take one with us, shall we? Uh, camera, are you coming? <laughs> camera, are you coming? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to hear me. Um, so thank you very much for joining myself and my little Riley boy on today's episode of oh, Mixed Mows. And we'll see you all again on the next one. Um, Two or five. I've got another lawnmower due to come in. Daddy. Um, someone text me yes. Two seconds, mate. Someone text me yes. They've got a mount field. I'm not quite sure. I think it's a SV150. I don't even know, to be honest. But it says hunting like anything. The revs go up and down. Um, but it's only a year and a half to two years old. Um, that's coming in Monday. So that'll probably be next on the old bench, I suspect. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just get through them as we get through them. So thank you very much, and we will catch you on the next episode, which will be coming up very, very soon. But until then, don't forget, take it yeah. easy.